the most amazing thing to me is the human brain. When you think about it, the human brain is a one kilogram lump of gray matter, and yet it is a network of over 100 billion interacting neurons. And they're your consciousness, the sum of your neurons is your consciousness, is your sensory input, is your experiences, is your emotions. It's, it's everything you are. And one of the great things about having a brain is that we can store memories. And the human brain is very good. It's, it's, it's incredible at remembering things. And think it, when you think about it, think about every building you've ever been in, you know, your workplace, your school. You can literally sit there right now and take a mental walk through that building. You can remember the floor plan of new buildings without even committing it to memory consciously. It's all subconscious. You can recognize faces. You can recognize people by their silhouettes. You can recall a song that you've heard 10 years ago, and you still remember the lyrics. And you never once tried to remember it. It was all done subconsciously. And so there are innumerable things that we are very good at remembering. Now, primarily, we are very good at remembering spatial locations. You can remember ye, the details of a house. You can remember where you, you, know, you, you put your socks, where you left your car keys. Well, you can remember that most of the time. But overall, you remember you know, the way that you got somewhere, and you can then you know, recall that information to, to leave when you want to. And all of these are, are spatial. And what I mean by spatial is that it's three-dimensional. Spatial memory. Spatial memory. And from an evolutionary standpoint, human beings have you know, evolved to need that spatial memory. When have we ever needed to remember you know, random strings of digits? When have we ever needed to remember phone numbers in the past? And that's a very new modern thing. And so these kind of unstructured data types are relatively bad. They're very bad. They're very hard to remember. Very bad at remembering. And so in this video, I want to talk about a method for improving your memory. And the key thing to understand here is that you already have the capability to remember incredible amounts of information. The trick is to convert very bad unstructured information types into very easy to remember structured types. A song could be considered a structured data type. You know, what I mean by that is that you have hints. You know, if you try and recall the floor plan of your house, and let's say you know, this is the door, front door. front door and you go in maybe you turn right and there's a hallway and it, you could remember you can say well I remember that uh, there's a hallway there and then you remember that there's a room you know the it's sort of a, a story and the story is key because each part is critically linked to the previous part you can't have this part of the house without having you know this part linking to it and so that really jogs your memory. Same with songs. Obviously, you don't have a, a random collection of lyrics. The lyrics make sense, and you can follow a structured type. And so in this video, I would like to introduce a mnemonic device called the method of low key. Oops. Method of low key. And low key means it, will, it refers to the locations. And so all we do is we take very bad unstructured information types like random numbers, maybe, maybe a phone number, random digits, formulas, you know, uh, just 
abstract facts. No abstract facts, names, uh, maybe like the capital cities of every country in the world, things like that. And so we we take this information and we convert we convert it into something structured. And understanding how your brain remembers things is the key to being successful with the method of Loki. And that's why in this video, I really want to uh, introduce or you know demonstrate or, or teach the concept of how, how your memories are stored and what makes the memories stronger. So really when you recall memories, when you recall a memory, it's like a play. It's, it's sort of like rehearsing a play. You know, you, you recognize, you remember that certain people were somewhere and they did certain things at a given place. And when you recall that memory, when you try and visualize it in your head, it's like those actors are, you know, reenacting what happened. And it's really uh, not that accurate. This is why eyewitness testimony is one of the most inaccurate forms of testimony in courts. Well, well not testimony, but they're the most uh, fallible types of evidence. Now, memories are more easily recalled if they are visual. So powerful memories, powerful memories are strongly visual. So if we wanted to remember our grocery list, say we needed to pick up eggs, bread, soda, cat food, Say that we needed to remember these four things. What you would do, and this is how the method of Loki works, is you take a geographical location. So you find a what's called a memory palace. And a memory palace is just a location that you know very well. Uh, a place that you're familiar with. Maybe it's your school. Maybe it's your house, your room, anything like that. And you cut it into pieces. And by that, I mean that you have, like if it was your house, the pieces would be every room. So you, you uh, quantize it. You quantize it into separate parts. Quantize slash make it into separate parts. Separate parts. parts. And then you fill each part with something. And you connect it with the story. So then you, you fill the parts, fill each part, and you fill it in order, and then you connect them with the story. Connect each part. So let's see what would happen with this grocery list. So if I were to use my house as an example, I would imagine and I would sit there and visualize myself opening the front door and then I would see eggs splattered everywhere. I wouldn't just see a carton of eggs. I would place in the front door as if some jerk came over to the house and just smashed eggs everywhere all over the floor. And that is why it forms a powerful memory because it's strongly visual but also because I imagine that I can hear it. I can hear it, hear the eggs cracking, and I can, I can smell it. So you want to make it as vivid as possible. You want to make it distinct, and you remember it connected with each part. So the next part was you wanted to remember that you needed to pick up bread. So I remember that I couldn't get past that hallway without slipping on the eggs and I had to grab hold of this gigantic loaf of bread. 
And the trick here is to say that the loaf of bread would be just absolutely massive because that would be vivid and you could smell the bread. So I would imagine that there's eggs cracked. Cracked. And then there's this massive loaf, a giant loaf of bread. And then you remember that maybe you couldn't get past the bread and you couldn't get into the kitchen without eating your way through a hole in the, in the bread. You know, you make it as obscure and as abstract as possible. Just something that you could not possibly forget. And then you remember that after eating all that bread, you were so thirsty. But luckily, there was a giant keg of soda. Keg of soda. And you drank to your heart's content. But then you turned and you went in towards the living room, and there was a giant bloodthirsty cat. Bloodthirsty cat. So maybe this maybe this cat does not like you very much. And it's very bloodthirsty. And so this is the the memory palace. You remember that there's a location, and so you quantize it into individual rooms, such as the hallway and things like that. You filled each part with one of the things that you wanted to remember, and then you connected each part. And connecting each part is absolutely critical. Because I can remember right now, you know, I, I can see it, but I didn't, I don't need to, to remember that I opened the front door, saw the cracked eggs, had to eat my way through a giant piece of bread, and then I was so thirsty. But then that I, I was so busy drinking it that I, I didn't see the bloodthirsty cat come. You know, that way everything is connected with each part. And if you focus on the smells, the hearing, and the visual aspects of that memory, then you simply can't forget it. You know, you could remember this backwards too, that you know, the, the cat ate you because you were distracted from drinking from that keg of soda, and you were drinking from the keg of soda because you were so thirsty after eating all that bread that you had to eat yourself a hole through because you slept on eggs and you couldn't get into the kitchen. And this is why this sort of memory is so good. You can remember it backwards and forwards. Really, this method has nothing to do with your intelligence, your, gene your, you know, your genetic code or anything like that. It all has to do with converting it. I could remember eggs, bread, soda, and cat food, but it's much easier to remember it as a story and even easier to picture that in my head. And so this video is an introduction to the method of Loki. And in the next few videos, I'll describe the uh, exact methods and procedures for really making this a powerful memory technique.